planting witch hazel may not even be on your radar. After all, it doesn't produce tasty fruit. Witch hazel is a pretty cool tree. It does this in the middle of dreary winter, and there are many ways to use it as an herbal medicine. It is traditionally used for bruises, bug bites, and skin irritations, such as acne and hemorrhoids. In shampoo, it helps with dandruff, and it works well as a natural deodorant. You can also use the leaves, bark, and branches. This video will show you how to grow this wonderful tree and make several healing remedies. Sadly, the word witch in witch hazel does not really reference the witch who does magic spells. That makes me sad because I like to envision myself at the cauldron stirring up medicinal potions. Witch actually comes from the Old English word weiss, which means bendable. The stems from the witch hazel tree were used as divining rods to look for underground water. The branch will bend downwards towards the ground when there is water there. Native Americans use witch hazel to treat many illnesses, including skin irritation, sore muscles, and even dysentery. It was the first mass-marketed American-made toiletry in 1846 originally named Golden Treasure. Today, it is used in cleansers and astringents by large cosmetic companies like Neutrogena and L'Oreal. Common witch hazel, Hamilius virginiana, is the native tree that is hardy in zones 4 through 8. Found throughout the Appalachian mountain range, it gets to be about 20 feet tall and blooms from October to December with yellow flowers. There are many cultivars that you can plant as well. Diane has beautiful red flowers. Witch hazel is a deciduous shrub or small tree. They appreciate full sun to partial shade and do well planted among other sh shrubs. Witch hazel does well in a mixed shrub border with other large deciduous shrubs such as lilac and viburnum. Around the base, you can plant companion plants such as helibores, winter heath, and bulbs of hardy snowdrops. They grow 10 to 20 feet tall, depending on the species, and have a 10-foot spread. Plant your trees 10 feet apart in moist, partial shade. Remember, in nature, they like the fringes of the woods and being along creek beds. They want soil between 6.0 and 6.3, so you may want to add cottonseed meal when planting, similar to the soil you need for blueberry and elderberry bushes. Here's my secret sauce recipe for elderberry. Check out that video linked above. Mulch with pine needles or wood chips to keep the soil moist. Many websites label them as deer resistant. I will say I think my deer have avoided them, but my goats have ravaged them more than once. Those winter flowers are certainly enticing to an escaped goat. In general, they are very hardy and resistant to pests and diseases. Scientific studies have proven that the compounds found in witch hazel, gallic acid, and natural tannins soothe irritated skin. The tannins can also kill bacteria and reduce urethia, a reddening of the skin. Scientists are studying witch hazel as a method to help prevent skin cancer. I can personally attest it soothes bruises, including those inflicted by a pet goose. So this is Goober Goose chasing Bob the goat. Goober was bad, and it was he who got me harvesting witch hazel. You see, I was always looking for my store-bought bottle of witch hazel to cure whatever bruise he had inflicted on someone. Incidentally, Goober was a fabulous guard animal. I have quite a few recipes on the blog post, but to get you started, you can easily make an astringent by boiling down the bark or wood. I used to gather fallen branches after a storm to use for this. 
one half pound of witch hazel bark or twigs and break them into pieces. Place in a pot and cover with distilled water, enough to cover at least one or two inches above the bark. Bring it to a roaring boil. Turn the temperature down to low, cover, and allow to simmer for 45 minutes. Remove from the heat and let the mixture cool slowly while still covered. Using a colander, strain out the liquid from the bark into a glass container, such as a mason jar. You can store this liquid for up to a week in the fridge or cool room. If you want to give your witch hazel a longer shelf life, you can use a high quality vodka as a preservative. Add one fourth as much vodka as you have witch hazel liquid. This will give you a shelf life of closer to six months if you store it in a cool, dark place. I keep mine in a cupboard in the bathroom. That way it is handy, theoretically, when I wash my face. This mixture is great for removing dirt and grime after a day in the garden. You can also use your liquid to make a wonderful, refreshing spray for your face. In this recipe, add 10 drops of your favorite essential oil. The benefits will depend on the essential oil you choose to use. Need it now? Make a quick poultice. This is my go-to remedy for bruises, bug bites, and attacks from my own pets. Incidentally, it also works well on poison ivy. If it's spring or summer, you can go and pull several leaves from the tree. You can also gather leaves in season and dry or freeze them for future use. To make a small batch, place several leaves in a small pot and add just enough water to cover the bottom of the pan. Bring to a boil and cook for just a minute. Turn off the burner and place a lid on the pot. Allow the pan to cool. You can choose to wrap the leaves in a cotton or muslin cloth. I typically just take the leaves out of the water and place them on my bruise or bug bite. Depending on the location, I may take some gauze and wrap it around the area to hold the leaves in place. The hardest part, for me anyway, is then sitting quietly and letting the skin absorb the properties of the leaf. There are more step-by-step -step recipes on the website. I will link the article below. If you are interested in other medicinal plants, check out my elderberry video next. Thanks for watching and have a sunny day.